story again and again. My boy told me there was a new studio coming to Long Island City. The studio was Power Play. Power Play, we have kids who are just coming up. Icons and legends. So it was really developing the culture. Listen for a while to the name of the place. When I first got started, we did everything on a wing and a prayer, a lot of duct tape, a lot of Velcro. We used to come in the studio and create right there in the studio. It wasn't the most beautiful place in the world when you walked in, but they had a certain sound when you walked out. Really wanted to do rock and roll. <laughs> and Power Play was definitely the wrong place to do that. Oh my gosh, do I have to name names? <laughs> I came from Green Street and learned a little technique how to make a kick jump hard. Shared that with Eli. And we came up with one for the trouble. Meanwhile, Molly Ma was definitely out in the hallway. <laughs> Power Play days. I was in the studio with Patrick Adams, Doc Rodriguez, Chris Conway, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of legendary engineers. To me, Power Play was the mecca. It gave me a, a future because I don't know if I would have ever been able to do it in one of the Manhattan studios. You know, those guys were expensive and they were tight and they were sterile. Power Play was laid back. It made you feel like creating. You never know who's gonna show up in Power Play. Tate Riley used to be in there. Then he's like, yo, let me play this record for you. You don't even realize it. You just, you in here engineering sessions, but you're a celebrity to me. I've read your name for years. It was almost as if, you know, every month something came out from Power Play that put us on the map. Power Play started developing a stable of engineers that really understood hip hop. When he told me that he had Doc, I said, okay, I'm out of business now, you know, and Doc was just a bad boy. I was able to record KRS-One, Rakim, EPMD, MC Light, Latifa. I couldn't ask for anything more because I, I am absolutely positive I recorded the absolute greatest there will ever be. I always wondered what BDP would have been like had Scott lived, and it was just heartbreaking. I remember when we heard the news, it was like getting hit in the head with a sledgehammer, you know, it was just like, what do you mean he's gone? One of the great things about Power Play was that there was this connection to the street culture that didn't exist at some of the bigger studios in Manhattan. To be there in the beginning when it was eight tracks, and when I left three studios in two buildings. Everybody kept expecting hip hop to just all of a sudden just fizzle out and be dead. I and mean, here it is now, 30 something years later. <laughs> 